Hi everyone, my name is Dave and welcome to Extra Credit, a video series where we take an unscripted look at topics related to local history and exploring that history. All right, so before we get into today's episode, as we normally do, just a quick reminder, first of all, to visit my website. There is a link in the description. There's all kinds of information on there regarding uh, the topics that we take a look at in this video series, as well as ones related to the explorations that I do. Uh, you can also follow me on social media. So I do have a Facebook page. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram. So please make sure you visit those uh, sites as well. And finally, please make sure if you haven't already done so, hit the subscribe button. There's there's tons of new content that comes out all the time and by subscribing you're going to get that content a lot faster than you normally would um, uh, before it appears on social media and make sure you hit that notification button so you'll know right away when all of that new content is coming out. So um, today's episode is all about videography um, and so uh, what we've done in the past is we have done a, uh, a video on photography which is a big part of some of the explorations that I do but probably even more so uh, is the video end and I've been involved with sort of um, recording my explorations uh, in a sort of moving picture format for quite a number of years but what's really sort of revolutionized that and obviously a lot of other things is uh, platforms like YouTube uh, which basically allows me just like we're doing with this video series allows me to upload those videos and basically present that information to a much larger audience and then obviously um, you know, sort of archive that information for hopefully many, many years to come. So what's going to happen is I'm going to sort of walk you through kind of a little bit of my background with regard to some of the video work that I've done in the past, and then basically talk a little bit about some of the tools, uh, some of the cameras and some of the equipment that I use uh, when I'm basically recording uh, these videos. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do, as I mentioned, we're gonna talk a little bit about some of the background with regard to my videography work uh, in regards to these sort of historical explorations that I've been doing. I, I can't give you an exact date uh, in terms of when uh, I started uh, doing um, some of the video segments and started recording some of the uh, some of the parts of these various uh, railway lines, et cetera, that I've been exploring. I, I wanna say, uh, around 1996 I did, but I can't be entirely certain. Um, if you've watched some of the previous episodes, and, and I'll put a link to kind of the first one that, that we've done, um, you know that I sort of began doing some of these explorations back in 1994. So for some reason, 96 sticks in my head, uh, but for sure, um, I began sort of recording a great deal, maybe not a great deal, but certainly, um, you know, a sizable amount uh, of areas back in 1997. So maybe that's the date that we'll go with, 1997. Um, and certainly if you visit my channel, there are uh, a number of videos from that time. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna post um, you know, I'm going to put up a little link to that in the, in the corner there that you'll have to take a look at it. And, and I'll put it down in the description as well. Um, probably one of my more notable videos from 1997 was one that I made uh, actually in Minnesota on a logging railway that's related to the, uh, to the Port Arthur Duluth and Western known as the Gunflint in Lake Superior. And that video is very unique uh, because what I actually recorded on that one is something that no longer exists. It's actually a, a trestle that was made out of stacked logs. Um, it's called kind of the corduroy trestle. And at, at the time I visited in 1997, um, you know, it was still standing. Unfortunately, uh, sort of a series of events kind of uh, spelled the end of it. So in 1999, there was a massive windstorm that hit that area and it blew down a lot of trees and it sort of damaged um, the uh, the trestle a little bit. And then unfortunately, uh, in, in 2007, there was a massive forest fire that kind of ripped through the area. And um, it basically set the logs on fire. And the problem was, is the, the fire refused to go out. It was smoldering inside the logs. So the um, U.S. Forest Service, um, that sort of, uh, that's part of their area, that's um, uh, where the trestle was located is federal land. Uh, they basically had to dynamite part of the trestle to kind of put out this smoldering fire that was going on. So um, that sort of structure no longer exists. And so that's kind of my, one of my more prized sort of videos, because uh, again, that, that, that amazing feat of engineering no longer exists. Um, and so I did make quite a number of videos uh, in 1997. Again, you can see that on my uh, on my channel. 
And then I sort of continued on with it. Um, back in those early days, uh, I was essentially using, um, you know, what was available at the time. So my parents had, you know, one of the old sort of eight millimeter, um, you know, camcorders. Uh, that it was using and uh, you know again when you sort of look back and, and I mean it's 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 I mean what you would expect um, you know the quality isn't quite the same as what you would see today you know now we're kind of making 4k videos and things like that you mean there was limitations in terms of the technology at the time um, and so I did that for uh, a number of years but I guess when I really started to sort of get into sort of making the, um, you know, kind of the, um, I guess I'm trying to grapple for the word here, um, you know, sort of decided to, you know, make these, these videos kind of more of a permanent thing was around about 2010. And that was around the time that I, I pretty sure if I remember correctly, I set up this YouTube channel. Um, and so at the time, um, that was when I really started getting back into doing some of my railway explorations. Um, and so I can remember, um, you know, doing quite a, a number of hikes, uh, that summer of 2010. And I, and I can remember, um, you know, initially kind of just recording a few things on my SLR camera, which was okay. Uh, but again, limitations of the technology, um, you know, that the camera could only record it at 480p. And so eventually what I decided to do was I decided to, to actually start using my video camera to record things. And so this was the video camera that I was using at the time. Um, you know, I, I didn't buy it to do the uh, to do the railway explorations. I actually bought it. Um, you know, I had young kids at home, and you know, you want to kind of record those those family memories. So basically, this is a uh, it was a Sony. Um, it was basically um, it was actually the first camcorder that I purchased that uh, um, that actually had a built in hard drive. Um, it was kind of neat. You know, it had uh, you know sort of the surround sound. Um, system you know it had the the, the pull out screen on the side uh recorded in 720p so at the time that was kind of a, a great little breakthrough it was really nice because it was very small very very compact easy to kind of work with uh and so basically i used that for a number of years uh, unfortunately, uh, what happened was is in 2014, uh, and the reason why I remember this is I was actually in Europe. Um, I do uh, school excursions, so I take students uh, to Europe. And uh, so we were in Europe, uh, and what ended up happening was the uh, side screen, so the pull-out screen on the side, failed. Uh, and so it was no longer, um, you know, showing the video. And so it was very, very difficult to kind of do this. Uh, and try to record thing, you know, with the camera right up to you to sort of your face. And um, so uh, essentially what it had to happen is I had to sort of uh, look at and invest in a new camera. And at the time there was, again, a big sort of technological change. We were kind of going from, you know, the 720p uh, and then bumping up into, you know, sort of the HD standard uh, and going into the um, you know, the 1080p realm. And so what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to show you uh, what I moved up to and upgraded to. All right, so after the screen on my uh, my sort of first hard drive camcorder failed, um, when I came back from Europe, um, I decided to sort of upgrade. And so um, uh, again, I wanted to get, because I was making these these you know, not only recording things at home for my family, but also kind of making these railway videos. I wanted to get something um, a little bit better. And so this was the upgrade that I make uh, made. This was another um, Sony camcorder. Um, again, 1080, 1080p uh, quality. Um, maybe I'll take the, uh, the hood off. Um, certainly a much larger uh, camcorder. Um, very good quality, um, uh, Carl Zeiss lens, um, surround sound, um, you know, again, the, uh, the pull out screen on there, uh, was a fantastic, uh, camcorder, the quality, uh, you can actually see the size of the lens, um, have very, very large sensor inside of it. Uh, so it's ability to render the images and particularly work in low light was just fantastic. Um, and basically, uh, I used this for uh, a number of years uh, on my railway explorations. And you'll be able to see that in some of the videos uh, from, again, around about that 2014 
um, probably into the around sort of, um, I guess, 2019 timeframe. So about five years or so. There's a bunch of other things uh, that I use this for. Um, again, just a great setup. Uh, as with the previous camcorder, it has the little hot shoe in here. So you can add things like a wireless mic, uh, which was a uh, which was a great little, uh, little addition as well. Had a lot of fancy things on there as well. You know, had things like neutral density filters and you could uh, basically control things Things like the uh, the white balance and uh, you know a lot of manual features you could control the manual focus on there as well right so it was uh, was actually a, a pretty great um, little piece of equipment um, the only thing that I found with this one compared to the other one was it was much larger um, obviously a little bit more ch sort of challenging to kind of carry around um, and again, kind of a little bit more kind of clumsy to, uh, to work with just simply because it was bigger, uh, and it was a little bit heavier. So, uh, what ended up happening, kind of the big sort of turning point, um, was in the summer of 2019, when I started kind of doing a little bit more explorations, uh, on the Kinghorn line. And, um, I'm going to put a link to that video. You'll see that up on the screen. Uh, in our last episode, we were talking a little bit more about my explorations of the Kinghorn line. Uh, so what ended up happening that summer in, in 2019, I started doing a little bit more explorations and I, I don't I don't think I was bringing this uh, bigger video camera with me that summer my son actually my older son uh, Ethan actually um, uh, got a GoPro camera uh, and I decided to sort of take it with me and try it out so this was the GoPro, GoPro that he got uh, this is a, a, a Hero Session 5 this is kind of a little bit of a de departure that GoPro did uh, was a little bit different uh, from some of the other GoPro cameras that it that they had put out. Um, what was unique about it was it was basically, this was the whole camera. And so it had a built-in battery. And so essentially um, you had to sort of charge the whole sort of camera, um, you know, when you, uh, um, you had to plug the thing in and there was no sort of removable battery. Uh, there's a little door on the side and that's where you would sort of plug it in. And that's where the SD card uh, goes in. And so I used that for a few of the videos that I was kind of um, doing that summer. It was pretty good. Obviously, it, it um, you know, the limited battery capacity was a bit of an issue, but I liked the compactness. I really, really liked the um, wide angle lens. Uh, so particularly when you're doing some of the railway stuff and you're going through things like rock guts and stuff where you're trying to sort of get as much in the shot as you're as possible. Uh, I found that was really, really great. The stabilization was very helpful. Like I found with this camera, you know, when you're trying to record and things are kind of bouncing up and down and, and this is stabilized, but it just did not have the same level of stabilization as something like a grow probe does. Now, unfortunately, what ended up happening uh, is we would kind of play around and goof around with this all the time. And we were using this in the lake and um, what happened was I can remember I had it in my hand, jumped in the water, and I just remember seeing the little door here just pop open and bubbles coming out. And so obviously the something happened, the door popped open and water got inside and that was the end of this GoPro camera. And um, um, unfortunately, you know, we tried, you know, throwing it and, you know, trying to get all the water out, putting it in the rice and it just... Um, it just never came back to life again. Uh, so essentially the water got in there and basically fried uh, everything inside. So that was uh, at some point in, in 2019, I wanna say early August, something like that. And so as I sort of decided that I was gonna be doing a little bit more of these railway explorations, uh, I decided that I was going to sort of upgrade my equipment a little bit and uh, decided to buy a little bit more higher end GoPro. All right, so in uh, in late August uh, 2019, uh, as I mentioned, I did upgrade my GoPro. And so what I did was I uh, decided not only to upgrade the actual hardware itself, but actually upgrade um, the format that I was working in. And so uh, I purchased a GoPro Hero 7. Um, so this is the camera here. And so um, I believe um, this was kind of a big jump up for GoPro. I was a little bit skeptical. Um, I mean, again, I had used this, uh, hero session here and I was kind of a little skeptical about, you know, you know, what's the quality going to be like. And, and after using this one here, um, you know, I was very impressed with the quality I was getting. Um, and, and so this, uh, the hero seven was a big step up for GoPro for several reasons. Um, it was kind of a bit of a departure in terms of the design of the camera itself um, from the, some of the previous models. And as well, I believe this was the first kind of GoPro camera um, that would work in the 4K60 
uh, format, right? So I was basically going from 1080p, and it's a pretty big jump, uh, going to 4K60 format, okay? And then in case you're not familiar with that, basically 4K uh, refer refers to the resolution, um, and then basically the 60p refers to the frame rate. Um, and so, um, you know, kind of early on, some of the earlier uh, 4K cameras were only shooting in 4K 30, so only 30 frames per second. So basically you're, you're doubling the frames per second. And so for example, these, this video that I'm shooting right now is in 4K 30. Um, um, just basically because uh, it makes for sort of smaller file sizes. Uh, and then we're just kind of shooting inside. Um, and then when I shoot my actual explore, exploration videos, we actually shoot those in 4K60. So I think the first few videos that I did with this, I actually shot in 1080p. And I was kind of a little bit hesitant to kind of go into 4K60 because I didn't know what it was like. I had heard that there were a lot of sort of um, issues with regard to the format and trying to process that format, like edit it. And um, I'm actually going to be making another video. So if you'll notice in the, in the beginning, this was sort of videography part one. I'm going to be doing a part two at some point, And we're going to be talking a little bit about the editing process. Uh, and that's a whole nother, um, um, you know, situation when you're actually trying to edit um, these these 4K60 uh, videos and and just editing videos in general uh, is is certainly a little bit of a uh, a little bit of a challenge. Um, so in terms of the camera itself, um, um, basically uh, the front there is no front screen. It does have this little screen here, but it just displays the data. Uh, on the one side, basically you have um, the um, USB-C uh, charging um, port, uh, and then basically you have a HDMI out. And on, on the other side, um, oops, I turned it on, sorry. Surprised the battery's still good. I haven't used it since the fall time. So on the bottom, you have the, uh, the battery cover and then the, uh, the battery that's on the inside. Sorry, I'm just turning it off here. And then the, uh, the batteries, it's, it's a little bit of a pain. Um, kind of pop them out. They have these little tabs on there. So there's the batteries for them. And then the SD card is right in here. Again, I just find it a bit of a pain. Um, I like to take the SD card out when I'm doing editing the videos and sort of downloading the content. So you basically have to take the battery out to get the, the S card, SD card. I can't, my, I don't have any nails, so I can't sort of get in there, uh, to do that. Um, so again, I'll turn this, uh, I'll turn this on. And so there's the little screen on the back. So you can see it sort of pointing at me and then you can see the screen on the front. And so the screen on the front basically has um, the uh, information about the number of files, basically the format you're working in 4K60 uh, and the amount of um, storage space uh, that you have left on your SD card. Uh, I have a 128 gigabyte card in there right now. And then it also gives you the battery level as well. Uh, I don't spend a lot of time looking sort of at the front of the screen. I can see all that information uh, on the back as well. And then it does have uh, all of these drop down menus on there uh, where you can access, you know, things like it, it does. You can turn this beep off and on. So when you're doing stuff, it beeps. I hate the beep. So I turn it off. Um, changing your format. Um, it does have a GPS in there. So it'll geolocate the videos and the, um, the photos that it takes. Um, yeah, again, there is a photo function. I really don't talk about that because I really don't use this to take photos. Um, I, you know, we've done that in the, uh, in the photo photography episode where I talk about what I use to, uh, to take the pictures and things like that with that. Um, so basically I've used this, um, um, for a number of years. So again, late sort of 2019, uh, I used it through 2020. Uh, I used it through 2021 and, um, uh, basically how I do this, um, is, um, one of the sort of the drawbacks with this, um, uh, the GoPro is that, um, you, you sort of saw the size of the battery. The, the battery capacity is fairly limited. Uh, and so, uh, the batteries don't last terribly long. So what I've done is I've actually purchased, uh, additional batteries and you can hear me sort of scrunching around. So what I do is I carry with me this little Ziploc bag and inside the Ziploc bag, I basically have all of my batteries and I keep it in a pouch on my tactical vest. And what I also have in there as well is I have a couple of extra 
um, little helmet mounts, uh, and I'll talk about the helmet mount in a minute. I do have an extra SD card. One time I was actually recording a video and um, I thought my SD card failed and I almost had a heart attack because I'm like, oh my God, what am I going to do? Um, so what I did actually, um, uh, so not this past winter, the winter before, I actually purchased these little plastic little um, containers. Uh, I got them off of eBay or something like that. And they fit, the batteries fit in here perfectly. And so what I've done is I have for this uh, Hero 7, uh, I believe I actually have about seven batteries. And so what I do is I've actually numbered them. So I use Roman numerals. So you can see this one's number five and this one's number two. Uh, and so what I do is that way I sort of rotate the batteries, uh, and basically try to prolong their longevity and their life. Uh, again, these little plastic containers, uh, keep them protected. So that way they're not kind of bouncing around and sort of smashing into everything. So they're in their little, uh, in their little containers. Um, again, when I, um, I basically use two things, um, when I'm recording. And so if I'm doing all the handheld work, I'm basically using one of these and so with the Hero 7, uh, you actually have to use one of these uh, little um, cages. And so the camera pops into the little cage and then you put it in, the, you know, there's a little locking mechanism and it goes in there. Um, and then I use this little, um, this is actually a floaty handle. So this thing actually will float in the water and then it just sort of comes off. Of course, can't get it off when I want to. So this is basically one of the little bases uh, for the frame and it just sort of pops back in and you lock it into place and that's how I kind of do all the handheld stuff. Um, when I'm uh, doing the uh, the biking portions, uh, I do have the little mount that I've stuck on to my helmet and I essentially have a separate frame, um, separate one of these frames that goes onto my helmet that's set at the, the correct angle uh, so I don't have to keep readjusting it. Um, the only drawback I find with this frame system is that um, it's a sometimes a little bit awkward uh, because you have to take the camera out of the frame uh, to be able to change the battery. And sometimes it doesn't come out very easily. Um, and I'm always kind of a little bit paranoid because I'll be doing this uh, on my bike. Uh, and so I'm standing up and I'm always worried that I'm going to drop the camera or drop the, you know, the, the big one is dropping the camera and, um, you know, somehow or another damaging the lens. Uh, I do have a uh, little screen protector. So I do have one on the front lens and I do have one on the back. Uh, but you know, if you're kind of dropping it from a height, um, you know, these things are pretty rugged, but I'm always kind of worried a little bit about, um, you know, sort of, uh, sort of damaging it. Um, Anyway, yeah, it can be, especially when it's warm outside, I find trying to, you know, and, and everything kind of expands a bit and it is black. And um, so when it's hot, the batteries tend to get warm and the camera tends to get warm and then you're trying to wriggle it out of this little cage. And so sometimes that can be a little bit of an awkward uh, endeavor. So anyways, as I was saying, um, I used this basically for a couple of years and then this past winter, I wasn't really planning on doing this, but I decided that I was going to, um, I was going to upgrade. And I'm going to talk about that in a second. All right. So uh, let's talk a little bit about the upgrade. So uh, this past winter, as I mentioned, uh, I wasn't planning on doing this, but right after Christmas, uh, I actually bought a newer GoPro. Uh, so this is the GoPro Hero 9. It's actually a model behind. And so this past fall, so the fall of 2021, uh, GoPro um, introduced the Hero 10. So this is the previous year's model. So this is the fall 2020 model. Um, but basically the reason why I bought it um, was because for the most part, there's a lot of similarities between the GoPro 9 and the GoPro 10. And um, what happened was, is they had a really, really good deal on this nice little kit. Um, that you got, uh, there was the box, there was another one of these little sort of floaty handles, uh, there was an extra battery, um, there was a, um, a charger, um, and so I'm going to talk about that in a second, I actually have to go and kind of grab it, I forgot to bring it over here, um, but one of the big things that you, you want to do is when you're using multiple batteries, there is a, 
um, dual battery charger uh, that GoPro has, and you can actually charge two batteries at the same time, um, which is a great little uh, thing to have. So anyway, let's talk a little bit about the uh, about the Hero Nine. So um, it, it obviously is a upgraded model. Uh, some of the the big things uh, about it is that. Um, um, there's a few kind of awkward things. I find the battery door a little bit more challenging to open. It's on the side. Um, and the SD card is in there and as well as the little charging port, the USB-C charging port is in there as well. Um, there is no HDMI out uh, on this one. Um, I'll turn it on here. So one of the big things that you'll notice with this is that uh, this front screen is much, much larger. I have it turned off right now, but the front screen will actually do a bunch of different things. Uh, you can actually have it display stuff like the Hero 7 does, but you can actually get it to set to actually display what the camera is seeing. So if you're doing kind of the selfie thing, right, where you're kind of pointing it at yourself, you can actually see what's going on on the screen. So that's kind of a big improvement. Uh, the other big thing, uh, and I believe this started with the Hero 8, is that they've... Uh, they don't have the little sort of um, holder, the little bracket anymore. The uh, um, the attachment points, they're actually built right into the bottom. Now, this is good and bad. Uh, the reason why it's good uh, is basically because... Um, sorry. Um, it, you don't have to take the frame off to change the battery, which is great. And I just finished talking about the fact that it's kind of awkward when it gets warm to get that frame off. The only issue with that, uh, with this is, is as I mentioned, I actually have two different frames. I have one that's on the, uh, the floaty stick. Uh, and then I actually have the one that goes on my helmet. So I have them preset to where I want them. Uh, this makes it a little bit more challenging uh, to do that. Um, because basically if you were to kind of go in between there's, you, you'd have to reset them. Um, and so that's a little bit, uh, that's a little bit more challenging. Um, obviously there's some, there's some sort of notable upgrades to it. Uh, the one sort of disappointing thing is that, um, the batteries are not compatible. So the batteries for the, um, uh, um, the nine, uh, are the same as the 10, but they're not the same as the one that's used for the seven. So the seven and eight use the same batteries. Uh, the nine and the 10 use batteries and they're actually a bigger size battery. Um, so that's a bit of a pain. Uh, so the batteries are not sort of interchangeable. So I had to buy sort of a whole new set of, of batteries uh, for, this, uh, for this camera. I did have to buy a whole new set of different little containers for them as well um, because the little clear ones don't, the batteries are bigger so they don't fit in there. And so the whole idea of them changing the batteries is apparently the batteries have a little bit greater capacity. They last a little bit longer compared to the ones for the, the seven and the eight. Um, as well, this camera is uh, has um, better stabilization, apparently. I haven't really had a chance to play with it a lot, um, but I will. <laughs> I will. Um, I'm sort of looking out the window. There's still quite a bit of snow, but we've had some sort of decent weather as of late. And I'm hoping that, you know, by sort of towards the end of April, we can start getting out and doing some explorations. Um, so um, the camera is actually bigger. Uh, so it actually is slightly bigger uh, than the uh, 7. Again, you have to accommodate the bigger size battery. Uh, and it does have a higher resolution. So um, the 9, I don't know about the 10. I think the 10 is the same. Uh, they both do 5K30 video. Uh, and so that is a uh, higher resolution than the 4K60. Um, I, I don't plan on shooting in the 5K30. Um, I do like the, uh, I find that the 60 frames per second is a little bit crisper in terms of the video. And um, again, I will address this when we do the video with the, uh, uh, with the editing. 4K60 to, to begin with is a massive, massive uh, file size to deal with. Just to give you an idea, a 4K60 video that comes out of a GoPro, uh, each minute of video is approximately one gigabyte of data and so when you start talking about you know when i when i do a um an exploration and you know i, I could have anywhere from you know um 20 to 50 gigabytes of data right from the the recording that i've done and now you're trying to edit this and try to manipulate those one 
gigabyte per minute files is very taxing on a lot of computers. Uh, I know my computer is a few years old and it really struggles at time to sort of, it takes a while to, to, you know, import those files and then render, um, you know, those files in that 4k 60 format. Um, and then, you know, for example, on YouTube, like, uh, I can watch this video, um, no problem, uh, in, in the 4k format on my video, uh, on my computer, uh, in the 4k 30 format, and then try to watch a 4k 60 format. Um, it just, unless you have a super, super high speed connection, um, it just, they just bog down, um, just because of the, the bandwidth that's needed to, uh, to support those files. So again, I don't anticipate working in the 5k 30 format. I'm going to stick to the 4k 60. Um, maybe someday I'll just try it just to, to sort of see what it's like. Um, but again, I, I don't really anticipate, uh, anticipate doing that. Okay, so there's a couple of last little things we're going to talk about with this, and then we've got a couple more things to take a look at with regard to video. All right, so I had to run and grab it because I didn't have it in front of me. So one of the things that I highly recommend if you have a GoPro camera is one of these things. This is the one for the um, Hero 7, Hero 8 batteries. So this is a dual battery charger. And so basically what you do is you plug it in. It's got the USB-C uh, connection here. And you're able to pop the two batteries in here. Uh, the only issue with this one is they they actually redesigned it for the um, the nine and ten batteries. So with this one here, the batteries go in, and they actually sit flush to the top. And sometimes it's a bit of a pain to kind of get the batteries out. Uh, you have to use that little pull tab on the top. And um, so the the new one, so the one for the nine and ten is actually very small, and so the battery sticks up a bit. So it's a lot easier to get it out. But again, very highly recommended. Um, on my explorations, depending on you know what I've seen and what I've done, uh, I can burn through uh, three, four, five batteries um, uh, on a, on an on an exploration. So. Um, yeah, this is a great little little tool to have uh, to to use to charge your batteries a lot quicker than you would if you have to cheat charge each individual battery in the camera. Uh, now, just in terms of other tools that I use when I'm recording some of my video work for my explorations, um, the other uh, tool that I use is I actually use my phone. I can't show it to you right now because I'm using my phone to record this video. Um, but one of the limitations with the GoPro is that they don't have a terribly great zoom function. And so sometimes if you're trying to, you know, zoom in and, and off the top of my head, I'm trying to think of things like, um, you know, there's been times where I've tried to record like a there's a telegraph pole and just trying to get a shot of some of the insulators there's a few that are still standing and trying to get a shot of the insulators on the top well I have to use my phone for that because I cannot zoom in uh, enough on the GoPro to get a decent shot of that uh, so uh, I will use my phone for that um, I will use my phone for um, videos like this um, and then um, I have one more thing that I'm going to talk a little bit about um, with regard to some of the technology I use to record these exploration videos. All right, so for our last little piece of technology that we're going to take a look at, we've we've actually shown this before in another video episode in the photography one, uh, and so we have uh, the drone. Uh, and so this uh, drone I purchased last year, um, the reason why I purchased it was it'll basically allowed me to um, record and to photograph things uh, that I wouldn't normally be able to access from the ground. So uh, I'm thinking of things like uh, the Blend River Viaduct, the Pass Lake Trestle, which is just down the road over here. Uh, and fingers crossed, uh, I'm actually going to be out doing a little bit more recording on uh, because I'm trying to finish up a video on the viaduct uh, that will be airing in about a month. Uh, I will put a link to the little teaser on there and once the real video goes out, I'll replace that with the uh, a link to the real video. Um, so again, I purchased this last year. So this is a DJI uh, Mavic Air 2. Um, so basically this is, uh, this is a couple year old model. Um, so it when I purchased it last year, it was actually the model before. Um, the reason why I didn't sort of purchase the uh, more recent model is essentially price. Um, you know, as it was, the uh, the drone itself was in the neighborhood of about $1,400. Um, so still, you know, very, very expensive. Um, I don't have the, uh, the propeller blades on it right now. Um, but basically, you can kind of see the uh, the drone itself. Um, the... Uh, 
the format in which it records in, so it will do up to 4K 60 video, uh, but normally I shoot in 4K 30, and the reason why I do that is because in 4K 30, um, the drone uh, will um, shoot in HDR. And so HDR refers to high dynamic range, which the GoPro cameras will do as well. So basically HDR um, essentially creates sort of composite images uh, and adds a lot more data to the images. And so that's particularly useful when you're shooting things that have a lot of contrast. And so it tries to sort of even out the uh, even out the image. Um, so the newer ones um, have the newer drones have a little bit more sensors. There's more sensors on there, and there is a uh, a bigger sensor in the uh, uh, in the camera. I think this is a two thirds of an inch sensor, and I think the newest model actually has a one inch sensor on there. Um, great little piece of equipment. Um, uh, very, very rugged. Um, I, if I actually have the video clip, I'll show that uh, where last year I actually, when it was fairly new, uh, I actually crashed the drone. Um, and so what I was doing was I was trying, I think it was actually for uh, one of the extra credit episodes, I was trying to get the uh, the um, drone to sort of record me and have me have it follow me. And uh, when I got to where I was sort of at, the drone was kind of facing me and I tried to kind of point it back in the right direction. And when it's facing you, the directions are opposite. And so instead of pushing it away from the tree, I pushed it into the tree. So it hit the tree, crashed, went down through the tree, got that all on video. Uh, and again, if I find that clip, I'll put that in there. And uh, um, thankfully it came out with only a few damaged propellers, which I was able to replace, um, and, uh, you know, still sort of functioned, uh, functioned properly. Uh, I've gotten a lot better at sort of the flying end of things. Um, I haven't flown it since the fall time, so I'm going to probably be a little bit rusty if we go out tomorrow. Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, some people who do a lot of drone work will fiddle around with a lot of the, um, you know, a lot of the manual settings. Uh, some people will, will fly in that or shoot in that 4K60 format. Uh, again, I just sort of stick to the 4K30, uh, again, because I want to use the HDR. I don't use a lot, a lot of the manual settings. I use a lot of the automatic settings because, again, um, you know, I'm sort of very paranoid when I'm flying and I'm trying to focus on the flying as opposed to trying to, fiddle with a lot of the uh, the manual settings on there. Um, again, great piece of technology. It allows me to do a lot more things and, and uh, I've been able to um, record a lot of things. So what I'll do in the link in the description, I'll actually put a, a link to the playlist of some of the drone videos that I created uh, over the last cup uh, after the, the last years. And so there's a few things that I was able to shoot all right, so hopefully you've enjoyed today's episode with regard to all of the video technology that I utilize uh, in these explorations and how I utilize them and what I'm utilizing. Um, we will be making another episode, as I mentioned, we will be focusing on kind of on the other end of the video, taking a look at um, essentially the editing part of things, which gets very, very interesting. Uh, again, trying to take some of those very large files that are sometimes created and sort of manipulating them and sort of putting them together to create videos like this one. Uh, but then again, some of the uh, exploration videos that we, uh, that we do. Um, so anyway, we'll be back again next month uh, with another video. Uh, so please stay tuned for that. So in the meantime, uh, take care and stay safe.